sometimes you hear people talking about autophagy like it's the miracle cure for everything. Just fast for five days, drink vegetable juice, and all of your problems are gonna go away. Well, autophagy can help you in a lot of aspects, but it also has a dark side and it may cause some negative side effects. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what are the signs of too much autophagy? Are you getting excessive autophagy and is it damaging your health? Autophagy is an important intracellular process that eliminates dysfunctional cell components, pathogens, inflammation, senescent cells, and general junk. Autophagy is required to fight age-related muscle loss, promote insulin sensitivity, getting into ketosis, managing the immune system, and removing aging mitochondria. However, although autophagy is good, it also has some negative side effects. The removal of pathogens by autophagy is called xenophagy, which has many immune-strengthening benefits. Bacteria like Streptococcus pyogenes or pathogens such as M. tuberculosis, Salmonella and Listeria monocytogenes can be eliminated by autophagy. This is good for dealing with infections and bacterial invasions. Autophagy can protect host cells against toxic products generated by pathogens such as Vibrio chloria cytolysin, Bacillus anthracis lethal toxin and H. pylori. Viruses that escape or block autophagy include herpes virus, HIV-1, human cytomegalovirus, and Coxsackie virus B3-B4 that may cause some bacterial overgrowth or at least prevent its death. Self-eating can enhance tumor cell fitness against environmental stressors, which makes them more resilient against starvation and chemotherapy. Hypoxia-induced autophagy promotes tumor cell survival and adaptation to anti-angiogenic treatment. It's not autophagy directly sustaining cancer or tumors, it's the cancerous cells adapting to stress and using autophagy to survive. Hypoxia inducible factor HIF is a major factor in cell survival to hypoxia that induces autophagy. HIF gets activated when oxygen tension decreases, which then increases autophagy activation. Hypoxia increases blood vessel growth that supports angiogenesis. This allows your cells to become more oxygenated because they build a better network of blood vessels. Unfortunately, it can also promote tumor expansion, metastasis and drug resistance by supplying cancer cells with more oxygen. So it's not this black and white with autophagy all the time. It's great for preventing disease, it's great for preventing getting sick by keeping yourself on point with all the things, but at the same time it's not necessarily the best thing for treating disease either, because you have to kind of adapt as you go along and you may have to change your approach all the time. You underestimate the power of the dark side. Here are signs of too much autophagy. Muscle loss. Autophagy does protect against age-related dysfunction and sarcopenia by degrading misfolded proteins and organelles. It's just that if you're fasting for too long or are under eating, then you'll eventually still lose muscle through autophagy. Secondly, if you're getting weaker at the gym, then it's probably because of losing muscle or not having enough energy to perform. That's why you need to counterbalance it with enough mTOR and eating enough calories and protein. Secondly, low insulin and IGF-1 signaling. High fasting insulin is associated with metabolic syndrome and diabetes, which happen due to energy excess. Furthermore, a lower insulin IGF-1 signal indicates more autophagy because of decreased nutrient signaling. Fasting, low-carb diets and exercise all stimulate autophagy a bit and they also reduce insulin IGF-1. Generally, a fasting insulin at less than 25 is considered normal, but I would say that for autophagy you would probably have to be less than 15 or 20. Chronically low IGF-1 below 100 can lead to sarcopenia, frailty, hair loss, hormonal imbalances, autoimmune issues and slower healing. But at the same time if you don't suffer from these symptoms, then an IGF-1 below 100 can actually be good for longevity because you're not overstimulating growth. Next up, hair loss. To prevent hair loss, you need primarily zinc, protein, vitamin A, B vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, collagen, iron, selenium, magnesium and a few others. The most common ones include zinc, B vitamins, D and magnesium, which is why eating some oysters and organ meats as a supplement can be very useful. Depleting these nutrients like protein and zinc promotes autophagy as a way of recycling them from your tissues, including hair and nails. You're basically using autophagy to get the nutrients you need from your tissues because you're not getting them from your diet. Next, neuropathy. Nerve damage in your fingers, hands and feet can cause hypoxia resulting in impaired blood flow, not enough oxygen and cold or numb limbs. Hypoxia promotes autophagy and angiogenesis, but it can also create neuropathy. Heart failure. Autophagy gets activated in response to cellular stress that's happening in heart disease. In some cases, it's beneficial for reducing inflammation and oxidative stress, 
whereas at others it's maladaptive and promotes disease progression. Defective autophagy or the accumulation of autophagy germs has reportedly caused cardiac dysfunction and heart failure. However, more often than not, heart failure results from hypoxia and ischemia. Autophagy is just there because it's trying to repair the damage. At the same time, too much autophagy can also atrophy the heart muscle cells, leaving it vulnerable to arrhythmia and irregular heartbeat. Weight loss, the process of autophagy, is involved in fat oxidation as well, in which it's called lipophagy. Generally, weight loss isn't a negative side effect for most people because they want to lose weight, but if you're losing weight uncontrollably, then you can stop it by feeding yourself more calories and stopping autophagy. Chronic fatigue, being tired all the time and needing stimulants, aren't that much caused by too much autophagy, but more so because of the energy depletion that's required for it. If you're under-eating, over-exercising, missing some key nutrients and fasting too much, you'll eventually start dragging your feet. Autophagy is involved in removing old and dysfunctional mitochondria, which can increase your energy efficiency and vitality, but too much of anything is still bad. Diabetic ketoacidosis. Ketoacidosis is defined as a dangerously high level of both ketones and glucose in the blood, causing the blood to become more acidic and promote oxidative stress. It happens primarily in alcohol poisoning or diabetes. Autophagy is another protective mechanism trying to repair the damage, so it's not causing the issue, but it's more like a sign of its presence. If you're fasting or eating a keto diet, your ketones will probably rise, but your blood sugar will also drop preventing ketoacidosis and maintaining healthy levels of ketones. If you're experiencing ketones above 5 and 10 millimoles per liter and your glucose is also above 120 milligrams per deciliter, then you should contact a medical professional and break ketosis. All of these signs, they have to be taken within the right context. For example, if your IGF-1 levels are low, but you're not losing muscle, you're not losing bone density, you're not frail, you're strong and you have enough energy, then it's probably not the problem. It only becomes a problem if the low levels of IGF-1 are making you lose muscle and they're making you more dysfunctional. So it's a matter of context. And the same applies to things like heart disease and heart failure. If the fasting helps you to manage the inflammation and oxidative stress, then it can be beneficial. But at the same time, you just have to be mindful that it could become a problem as well. I find your lack of faith disturbing. You don't need to be in autophagy all the time because it's going to prevent your body from repairing itself and it's also going to inhibit muscle growth. You probably don't want to lose muscle because of too much autophagy and too much fasting. So that's why you have to counterbalance autophagy with enough mTOR and eating the right foods at the right time for promoting muscle growth and muscle maintenance, even if you are, you know, a regular person who doesn't want to be a bodybuilder. Muscle is incredibly valuable for longevity. But at the same time, overexpressing mTOR and overexpressing IGF-1 can also become a problem because they're associated with accelerated aging and even getting some cancers. So that's why you don't want too much autophagy, you don't want too much mTOR either. If you want to know how to fully optimize fasting, nutrition, training, meal timing and food combining, then check out my Metabolic Autophagy Masterclass. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay balanced, stay empowered. The plans you refer to will soon be back in our hands.